I don't know. I don't believe Patrick Mahomes has stepped one foot into his prime. Let that sink in for a second. He hasn't even got to his prime yet. So here's a chance over the next six years, let's just say you mentioned earlier that Andy coaches until he's 70, which is another six years. Yep. Is it far-fetched to think no. they could be in another three Super Bowls? No, it's not far-fetched. The Kansas City Chiefs are obviously coming off of a Super Bowl season, but what's so crazy about all of this is they have a great chance to do it again, especially with the moves they've made so far this offseason. They'll obviously still have Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey next season to help lead the offense, but someone who needs to be talked about more is Kadarius Toney. The Chiefs made a trade for Kadarius midseason for a compensatory third-round pick and a sixth-round pick. Kadarius Toney was drafted in the first round of the draft, but during his time with the Giants, he just couldn't stay healthy, so they decided to trade him. And the Chiefs front office knew that if they could keep Kadarius Toney healthy, that this trade would be a steal. And it was exactly that, because this trade worked out perfectly. He had a huge impact throughout the Chiefs' road to the Super Bowl, and in the Super Bowl specifically. The Chiefs also have MVS coming back, who is a solid receiver that gives you that deep threat ability with a 4-3-7-40 time. MVS last season had 42 receptions for 682 yards and two touchdowns, which is exactly what you should expect from a guy like him. While the Chiefs still have both of those guys, they did end up losing Juju and and Nicole Hardman. Juju played pretty well for the Chiefs last season, and he played a key role in their Super Bowl run, but he was more of a one-year fill-in type of guy. McCole Hardman, on the other hand, has been with the Chiefs his entire career, and he made a huge impact when he was on the field. But last season was his last season on a rookie deal, so for the Chiefs to re-sign him, he would have needed to have a phenomenal season. And last season, he was only able to play in nine games, including the playoffs, because of injuries. So the Chiefs front office just didn't see the value in paying him $4 million dollars like the Jets did. So if the season started today, the Chiefs' top three receivers would be Kadarius Toney, MVS, and Sky Moore. This receiving core is pretty weak compared to previous years, but good thing the Chiefs still have the draft and some time to make moves. In my last video, I mentioned the idea of signing Odell Beckham. I said it wouldn't be a bad idea to sign him if the price was right. And obviously, we just saw the Ravens sign him for an $18 million deal, so I'm glad the Chiefs stayed clear of this. So let's take a look at what the Chiefs can do to improve their receiving core. First, let's talk about the potential trade for D-Hop that could happen but would most likely take place after the draft if it did. The Cardinals stated that they wanted a 5th and a 6th rounder for D-Hop, which is great value for him. The only issue is at the time of this recording, the Chiefs only have $4.5 million in cap space. Now, D-Hop did say he would reconstruct his contract if he was traded to a contender, and the Chiefs could restructure some guys to make room for him. I mean, it wouldn't be ideal for the Chiefs' cap space, but can you imagine D Hop and Patrick Mahomes on the same field, it would be a nightmare for anyone they played against. But the more realistic way to go about getting a receiver is through the draft. The Chiefs have the last pick, so obviously you won't be able to get the best of the best there, but honestly, you don't need the best of the best. You just need another solid guy to add to the receiving core. In the first round, the only way I'm taking a receiver is if a top tier guy drops there like Jordan Addison or Quentin Johnson. But this receiving class has some pretty good depth to it, so in the second round, you'll have some solid options. Guys that come to mind there are Tank Dell, Rasheed Rice, Kayshawn Booty, and then maybe if you're lucky, Jalen Hyatt or Josh Downs. You could also wait until the third round and hope a solid guy like Xavier Hutchinson is there. After getting a receiver, no matter how the Chiefs decide to do it, their offense should have plenty of weapons for Patrick Mahomes to work with. Now the last position I want to talk about on the offense is the offensive line. The Chiefs interior O-line is staying the same with Creed Humphrey, Joe Tooney, and Trey Smith. The interior O-line last year was either the best in the league or it was a close second to the Eagles. So having all these guys back works out perfectly. Now at the tackle position, the Chiefs did make some changes. First off, they decided to let Orlando Brown walk and to replace him, they signed Jawan Taylor. They signed Jawan to a four-year deal for $80 million, and he should honestly be an upgrade from Orlando Brown. Jawan Taylor, throughout his four years with the Jags, was one of the better pass-blocking tackles in the league. To back this up, he only allowed 16 pressures last season, compared to Orlando Brown's whopping 47. So at left tackle with Jawan Taylor, the Chiefs should be sitting pretty good. 
The only spot left to talk about is right tackle. Currently, the Chiefs have Lucas Neong there because of the decision to let Andrew Wiley walk. I think it'd be a good idea to draft someone to fill that spot because I'm honestly not too high on Neong. In the first, I'd like to see a guy like Anton Harrison from Oklahoma. He could definitely be there at the 31st overall pick and he'd be an instant starter. But if they don't end up taking a guy in the first, I'd like drafting a guy like Blake Friedman from BYU in the second round. Either way, the Chiefs should try to find a way to fill that void at tackle, and if they can, their offense is looking perfect heading into the 2023 season. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, the Chiefs didn't make a ton of moves, but they made a few that I really like. At safety, they decided to let Juan Thornhill walk. Juan Thornhill was great during his time with the Chiefs, so it sucks to see him go, but I think the Chiefs made the right decision here. Thornhill ended up getting a three-year deal worth $21 million from the Browns, and I just don't think the Chiefs were willing to pay that. Especially when you can go sign a guy like Mike Edwards to take his place for only a one-year deal worth $3 million. When you take a look at their production last season, it's almost identical. So basically, they got an equal or better option that's a little bit younger and for less than half the price. After this move, the Chiefs now have Mike Edwards, Justin Reed, and the rookie Brian Cook who will continue to progress. At corner, I'm not too worried about where the Chiefs are at. They have both Trent McDuffie and Legereus Sneed who are both coming off great seasons. Now in the front seven is where the Chiefs made some really big moves that can really put this defense all together. We all know that the Chiefs struck goal with the pick of Willie Gay in 2020 and the pick of Nick Bolton in 2021. These two guys have been holding down the linebacker core well, but to add to them, the Chiefs added Drew Tranquil to a one-year deal worth $3 million. Drew Tranquil last season had 133 tackles, one interception, 52 defensive stops, and five sacks. Drew Tranquil is really good in both the run game and in pass coverage. I'd say he's a little bit better in pass coverage, but overall he's a super solid linebacker and adding him to Willie Gay and Nick Bolton is going to be insane. Lastly, let's take a look at the defensive line. The Chiefs still have Chris Jones and George Karloftis who both had great seasons last year combining for 22 sacks. But the Chiefs did lose an important pass rusher in Frank Clark. So to try and replace him, they signed Charles Omenihue to a two-year deal worth $16 million. Omenihue has been a solid edge rusher throughout his four years with the 49ers even though he was only a rotational guy. A positive for the Chiefs though is that he's coming off his best season yet where he had five sacks, 10 defensive stops, and 54 pressures. He's super athletic, tall and long, and at 6'5", 280, I'm pretty hopeful for what he'll be able to do for the Chiefs. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the fact that you're not subscribed and you haven't watched this video right here about the Chiefs. So go watch it right now, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.